Welcome to First Thursdays. Thank you all. Continue to eat. There's still food. Um, and uh, if you're just arriving, don't be shy to come up here and start along the line there. Uh, and if you finished and you're wanting to know, somebody's asked, what do I do with my plate? Uh, plates go up here, and if you have anything to compost, uh, thank you to Full Sun Composting. Natalie, are you in the room to give away? Thank you, Natalie, for helping with the compost, again, with Full Sun Cos Composting. So thank you all so much for being here today. Again, you're at First Thursdays, and I know this is the first time for several of you, so we hope that you will join us again in 2019, and we meet on the first Thursday of every month, so that's an easy way to remember it. And we're generally here. There's two times next year we'll actually be at another location. Um, and but you know, just uh, sign up for our updates, and you'll get that information. But uh, again, we're super glad to be here. So a couple thank yous and some updates, and then we'll get started. So uh, I'm Corey Williams, Executive Director of Sustainable Tulsa. And again, a big thank you for you joining us. It's a busy time of year. And your interest in knowing what, how to think of these uh, holidays with a little more of a green uh, lens and activity is great. So we appreciate you being here. I want to thank uh, PSO as our lead sponsor for First Thursdays. And also a thank you to Cavanta, TCC Center for Creativity, uh, PSO Wind Choice, Grog's Green Barn, and One Oak for their support of First Thursdays. Let's give them a round of applause. And we literally could not do it without their support. So uh, if you know anybody from those organizations, please uh, say thank you. And also today, it was so delicious. And this is a big thank you to One Oak. Uh, they wanted to say thank you to Sustainable Tulsa and to our members and to you for doing the sustainability work that you're doing. So let's thank One Oak for this delicious meal from LAFA. So, um, yes, yeah, so, and who's been to LAFA? Who has never been to LAFA until today, sort of? Okay, so we have some LAFA goers in here. If you haven't, they're downtown in the Arts District, so uh, make your way over there another time. But uh, I also want to thank my board members that are here today. Uh, give a wave or stand up Mike Lemus and Matt Newman. And I think that is it for today. Uh, Carrie and Tracy, I didn't know if I saw you out there. Uh, so thank you. I also want to thank my Sustainable Tulsa team, uh, Sandy Sloan. Uh, give a wave over there. Sandy's helped make it all perfect today. And Sarah Hicks right here, our new scorecard coordinator. And Jill Ma that uh, welcomed you in. Um, I'm super thrilled to have an awesome team and, and their work for making today go so well. Um, Usually we do uh, a couple minutes where you introduce yourself to somebody you haven't met yet. So uh, let's take one minute at your table because you're digesting. I'm not going to make you get up and move around. But one minute at your table. Make sure you know everybody that's there and introduce yourself. So go. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so again, uh, if you do, when you bring your plate up here, again, you're scraping the, the food into the compost bin. So just uh, was asked to remind you of that. But um, so a few updates. 
Um, we just had our last B2B case for sustainability series. So that's another program that we do. So we have First Thursdays and B2B. And we just held that at TU last week. And it was um, uh, really focusing on our Bellman winners. And I think many of our Bellman winners are here today. So our platinum and uh, overall winner was Kavanta, Matt Newman. Woo woo! Um, Large business and organization was TCC. Woo! Um, middle size organization or business was the Tulsa Zoo back there. And, and actually, Benea Muna, I don't know if anybody's here from Benea Muna, but they are here in spirit because the cookies that um, are here available for you are um, produced by Benea Muna and the Altamont Bakery. And just to take a quick note as you are uh, grabbing one on the way out or having one now, um, the story, read the story, um, but in short, uh, B'nai Muna congregation wanted to do something for the mental health uh, community and decided to create uh, a bakery. And they invite many mental health individuals that are struggling to come and bake. And so the bakers are paid uh, for their time and all the money from the cookies goes back to pay the bakers as well as for ingredients. And one of the things I didn't realize until I learned about the bakery is that many individuals that struggle with mental health uh, that don't have a network around them, find themselves uh, basically checking themselves into the hospital to stabilize, get the, the uh, medication that they need. And uh, when uh, they, uh, st a couple of the bakers, when they started in this program, one of the bakers, she would check herself in once a month, and that was just how she survived. Uh, once she started the program, she didn't check herself in for three years. So pretty amazing. It's a, it's a great story about why community matters. So um, these cookies, you can buy them or you can buy them and put your, and you can sell them, or you can put your label on like we did today and give them away uh, to your community. So, and actually Betty Lehman just walked in. Give a wave over there. I was just talking about the cookies from B'nai Amuna and our small business awardees. So uh, those videos are going out, and so uh, check our Facebook page to see those videos. Fox 23, Wes Kane, and, and Tim uh, Boatnick did an amazing job on these videos. So uh, anyway, it was a way to acknowledge the work that our Bellman winners are doing. So uh, we'll meet here uh, again uh, for First Thursday, the first Thursday of the month. And uh, we'll have Michael Patton back by uh, demand. Uh, he did a uh, New Year's resolution program last time. He's funny, he's insightful, he's thoughtful. And so we hope you'll join us and start your year off uh, the right way. So we'll be here again at TCC Center for Creativity. And we appreciate uh, being able to be here again uh, with you all. So uh, before, uh, so again, so the program today is um, about green gift giving. And so instead of just buying copious amount of things, thinking, being more thoughtful about, well, what does matter? What are things that I can give or do for uh, my uh, members of my family or my friends and things like that? So uh, we asked Anina Collier, uh, the director, of, uh, the dean of the Center of, uh, for Creativity and the George Kaiser Family Foundation endowed chair to share with what she's doing as a way to think about doing an activity or creating something as a way to give gifts this, uh, this holiday season. So Anina Collier, again, is the inaugural dean in the Center for Creativity at the George Kaiser Family Foundation endowed chair at Tulsa Community College. Through her vision and leadership, the Center for Creativity has supported dozens of nonprofit organizations, thank you, <laughs> and helped thousands of people in the Tulsa region experience free workshops and art ex uh, exhibits. Her major initiative includes the I Can't Workshop series, and I think there's some information on your table there, a partnership between the center uh, and 15 Tulsa arts and cultural organizations. And also they started the Please Touch the Art and an exhibit and an engagement of all five senses with special focus on visitors who are blind or visually impaired. So uh, we thank, thank you, Anina, and we welcome you to tell us more about what you're doing. Let's welcome Anina. 
Thank you so much, Corey. Um, and I want to thank my slide advancer. You know her as a very engaged member of Sustainable Tulsa, but we know her as the Dean of Engaged Learning here at TCC. So thank you, Cindy. She's helping me out because everybody feels really far away and I don't want to get trapped behind the podium. So I am so excited to be here today. Uh, thank you to Corey and, Susta and Sustainable Tulsa for giving me this opportunity to tell you more about the Center for Creativity. Uh, we teach art, design, and communication here. Uh, most of our classrooms are on the third floor and those are students that uh, may be looking to transfer to a four-year degree in graphic design. It may be someone who's doing a workforce development needs a, a, a Adobe Master Design Certificate or it may be a community member who wants to uh, take a watercolor workshop. So certainly our primary mission is uh, education uh, but here uh, in the first floor event space where we are right now uh, is where we do a lot of free community programming and that uh, is a focus on adults. Uh, we like to say at the Center for Creativity that we ignite the creative spirit through education, collaboration, and inspiration. And so I will tell you about some of our free events and hopefully give you some green gift ideas along the way. Um, and our, I think I said this, but our community programming, it's all free and open to the public. Uh, no experience is required and no supplies are required. So we try to keep a very low barrier of entry uh, for our experiences with a focus on adults. Let's go ahead and slide. Oh, thank you. She already did it. So Pablo Picasso said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. And that is the guiding principle behind the I Can't workshop series. So when we were children, almost all of us loved to dance and sing and draw. We were very creative. But somewhere along the way, as adults, most of us not only stop doing those things, but we think we can't. And I think that makes us really lose an important part of our humanity. And so I conceived of these workshops as a way to help adults reignite that creative spirit, but also to showcase everything our community has to offer through the 20, and I need to update my bio, it said 15 partners, now we're up to 20 uh, arts and culture nonprofit organizations that host these workshops and, and provide those supplies. So while you get to come in and try something new and use a different part of your brain than you normally use, you're also getting connected to an organization. And the goal of the I Can't workshops isn't to show up and realize, oh, I had a hidden talent for sculpting I never knew. Uh, probably won't happen, but it is, again, just to get out of your box and, and try something new. Uh, and we'll slide, please. So as I mentioned, those I Can't workshops, they're, hold, they're held every Monday at noon here at the Center for Creativity in this space. Um, and again, they're free. You don't have to bring any supplies. Those are provided. Um, and we have 20 community partners. Uh, slide. Uh, the series kicks off on January 28th with AHA Tulsa, who is here today. Uh, and I think Cindy mentioned you'll find schedules um, at your table. So you can really kind of look over them in depth. Uh, they, we'll go ahead and slide, please. I'm sorry. No, not at all. So it runs through April 8th, and then I'm really excited to announce, and I think this is the first time I've done it publicly, so exclusive, uh, we are adding a summer series this year, and we've had a lot of requests for that, so we'll have another series uh, in June, and we're adding four community partners. The aquarium and the zoo are two of those, so we're really excited to bring them into the mix. Uh, let's go to the slide, please. So you're probably thinking, that's great, but what the heck does that have to do with green gifts? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am a huge fan of the experience gift. So if somebody says, hey, I'm going to take you out to lunch, and uh, maybe it's just take me out to lunch. I like food. That sounds great. Or maybe it's we'll take you out to dinner, and we'll go see an art exhibition or a show. I love gifts like that so much, and I think many of us in this room probably would too. And, and, and as Corey mentioned, we have enough stuff, most of us. So. Uh, I, uh, I could see a neat uh, gift idea if there's someone at your work uh, who you want to have a little um, special gift uh, to give. You can bring your lunch into the I Can't workshops. Just bring, bring a brown bag lunch. So you say, hey, I'm going to buy you lunch, and we're going to go try I Can't Hang Art with AHA Tulsa. I would love that. Uh, write it up on a little card, put it in a bag. I think that would be a really neat gift and something your friend would definitely remember more than uh, you know if you gave them another pair of 
socks or something. I know that was probably the second on your list, right? A pair of socks. Uh, let's go ahead and slide. So uh, if you're looking for something a little bit more grand, uh, we have, as I mentioned, uh, several of our iCamp partners here today. Uh, and I'm just going to very briefly tell you what they're offering, because in many cases, they are offering exclusive green gifts just for Sustainable Tulsa that won't be available again after today. And so these are those kind of experiential gifts uh, that you can give to friends and family members. Um, that <clears throat> will give them a memory they'll always remember. So, the Oklahoma Aquarium, right over here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, right over here. Think blue to go green. So they are giving a really great discount on their memberships and their corporate tickets. And then they're also offering a one-of-a-kind gift experience, which is a package of admission and a behind-the-scenes tour of the aquarium. Has anybody gotten to go on a behind-the-scenes aquarium tour? Few people. Okay. I have two. And that is truly an astounding experience. I mean, it's amazing enough to get to walk underneath the shark tank, but when you're standing above the shark tank and seeing them circling right there, it you will never forget it. And um, as some of you may know, we uh, our aquarium is one of the only ones in the entire world to have bull sharks on exhibit. Uh, my understanding is they're a very, very difficult animal to keep on an exhibit, and uh, hardly anyone can do it, but we have them right here. And so I'd highly encourage you to consider that. It would certainly be unforgettable. And if you haven't seen their new Polynesian Reef exhibit yet, it is truly amazing. Uh, slide. Next is the zoo, which is right back there. You can wave. So who's seen the Lost Kingdom new exhibit? Most of us, right? If you haven't, it's incredible. It just phenomenal. I highly encourage you to go see it. And so the zoo, uh, they have a really special offer today, $10 off a zoo membership, and they're adding an extra month to the membership. So a really great deal. And then they also have um, information on how to build your own bat house. So that would be a neat uh, thing to do with a loved one too. <clears throat> Slide, please. So, Waterworks Art Center. Who has heard of Waterworks? Quite a few. Still, you know, sometimes I think it's a little bit more of a hidden gem than it should be because it's totally fantastic. It's right up here uh, on Charles Page Boulevard, right? Just a little bit north of us. And they offer an incredible variety of workshops and classes uh, for all levels of experience and ages 16 and up, right? 16. Um, and they offer 30 different classes per quarter. So you have lots, of, lots to choose from, lots of different um, activities that you could sign up for. Be a great like mother-daughter gift or friend gift. I would love to take a workshop or class with someone um, as a gift. In fact, I gave my mom a... Uh, a workshop just last year that she loved. So what they have at their booth is they have some examples of their artwork that you can create through one of their courses, and then they also have their course catalog. So you can take a close look at everything they're offering and pick out just the right things uh, for your gift. Slide, please. All right, to AHA Tulsa. Who has been there since they totally redid with their new experience? Okay, you've got to go. It is it is, it is an experience. I mean, there's no other way. You are totally immersed in a new world of art. It's a new way of experiencing art. It's incredibly innovative, uh, the result of a collaboration among many different artists. Uh, so you've got to go. And they, they've kind of redone. Um, you can always do the experience. You can always see their gallery. And then you can always create some artwork, too, when you attend. So it really is a multifaceted art experience. Uh, so they are offering memberships, workshops, and reusable shopping bags. Slide, please. And that brings us to the Philbrook, right over here in the corner. Um, they have today a special gift membership that includes a Philbrook exclusive bar of chocolate by Glacier Confection. Love Glacier, very exciting. Um, and then they're offer also offering tickets to the Philbrook Festival. Um, holidays are a very special time at the Philbrook. You can see by that picture, it's just decorated so beautifully. Um, there are uh, Santa visits, train rides, live music, a Lego village, activities, and more. So you can buy single uh, ticket purchase to the festival or gift memberships right over there. And then you'll get to hear more from all of these partners, plus a couple other 
other organizations. I think my understanding is they're going to be a pass the mic in a minute so you can find out exactly um, what they're offering. But I, I really hope you'll consider some of these gift ideas because not only would you be supporting a great local organization that's doing phenomenal things for our community, uh, but you'd be giving your loved one the, an experience that's a memory that they'll never forget. And that uh, I think is something far more valuable than an object. In fact, in my family, all of the adults decided we were going to focus on experiential gifts this year because we just all have too much stuff, and uh, that's that's what we are hoping for these days. So um, I look forward to providing those types of gifts for my family members, and maybe you'll consider that too. Uh, slide, please. So now I'm going to talk about a few upcoming events here at the center that could also be rolled into some kind of green gift idea. So on your table, you'll see a postcard, uh, and this is a mouthful. This is for an exhibit in January called Convergence. Challenging Anthropocentrism, which is a very tongue twister way of saying challenging a human centered version vision of the universe. So all of the work in this exhibition will be focused on the intersection between the human and animal worlds. It's a really cool concept and we did an open call for artists uh, and received submissions from all over the country. Uh, with the, the exhibition is being curated by two artists with the Tulsa Artist Fellowship, Dan Musgrave and Yataka Stark Fields. And so we have a really fantastic uh, ex exhibition that'll be going up in this room in January. And we'll do an opening reception for the uh, first Friday art crawl in January. And what we do is we offer free parking in TCC lots, so you don't have to worry about parking in the Arts District, which can be a little challenging on art crawl nights. You can come in here, see the exhibition, and then take our free limo bus to the Arts District for the rest of the crawl. I think that would be a fantastic gift. Say, hey, I'm going to take you out to eat, and we're going to do the Arts Crawl. I would love that. Maybe you know someone who would, too. Uh, slide, please. So I mentioned that it's curated by two of the TAF artists. Uh, on the your left there is uh, Dan Musgrave and his wife Stephanie. Uh, so they are going to, in conjunction with this exhibition, uh, be offering some programming. And all of this will be centered on exploring that intersection of human nature, human and animal worlds. So Dan's giving a lecture and a photography workshop. No experience is required for that workshop. And then his wife Stephanie, she is a hardcore researcher who goes into the jungle in the Democratic Republic of Congo and sets up video cameras so that she can study the cultures of the different chimpanzee family groups that live there. It's astounding. And so she is going to come in to talk about uh, what she has learned uh, about the tool use of some of those chimpanzees. And you might notice that these are kind of at odd times of day for many of us. I know that's a challenge. Uh, here at TCC, uh, we align as much as we can of our programming to align with specific classes. Um, our, like for example, Stephanie's workshop is aligned with an honor zoology class. Uh, like many co uh, community college, like many community colleges, our students have a lot of difficulty getting to events outside of their class time because our average student, and, and one of my colleagues in the room can correct me if I'm wrong, but has, is, a, is a student here, but also has a full-time job and children. And so if we have an event at 7 o'clock at night, it might, you know, be really tough for them to get here. So that's why we often align them at those times. It can be difficult for those of us uh, working typical 8 to 5 jobs. But I just wanted to kind of throw that in there because our students are incredible what they are achieving with the many demands they have on their time. Uh, slide, please. So also in, conjun in conjunction with Convergence, uh, the second of those two TAF curators, Yataka Starfields, uh, you can have a chance to design and create a mural that will be painted here at the Center for Creativity in that first floor stairwell that faces out towards the street. Again, no experience required. Um, so you can come and help create the design on January 22nd and or come and actually help paint. 
than the few days that follow. We don't know what it's going to look like. It's going to be cool, I'm sure. Um, and we do require registration for this one because we can only fit so many people in a stairwell at any given time. Uh, you can sign up for one hour time blocks to come in and work on the painting uh, or you know, the whole afternoon if you choose so. Uh, but that's uh, a really neat opportunity and again, something no one would forget, I'm sure, uh, that you could roll into a green gift. Slide, please. Looking a little bit farther out, um, Corey mentioned in my bio an art exhibit called Please Touch the Art. So this takes the idea of a traditional art exhibit and turns it on its head. Um, because of course, every other art exhibit, you know, you can't touch the art, of course. And, and often you may have a docent or somebody kind of keeping a close eye on you to make sure you don't get too close. Of course, they have to. Those are priceless works of art. But this is for anyone who wants to e experience an art show in a new and different way. We have it every June. It runs through July. And um, every piece can be touched. And then we also work really hard to find art that engages all the rest of the five senses. So it works in si sight, sound, smell, touch, and even taste. Uh, taste has been a little bit difficult, uh, but we'll see what comes this year through our call for artists. It's open right now, so if you're an artist and that sounds interesting to you, we'd love to see uh, what you might submit to this um, exhibition. But that opens the first Friday in June every year. Again, the free limo bus rides to the Arts District for the Arts Crawl. And we have an opening reception. Many of the artists who exhibit come uh, to, to meet people. And it does have a special focus on visitors who are blind and visually impaired. We work with New View Oklahoma, the Oklahoma School for the Blind, and a few other organizations. Uh, but really, again, it's, for, it's great for families or anybody who just wants to experience art in a different way. Slide, please. Um, <clears throat> And you've probably noticed we do have an art exhibition on display right now. This is our digital media student uh, showcase. So every single month we switch out the exhibits. And that, again, you can just come in and take a look and see what's here. Um, in March, we, or in February, we have the TPS student all district show. So it'll be a huge show for Tulsa Public Schools. And then in March, we have a partnership with Fab Lab called Makers Gonna Make. And that is also an open call. So we are gonna get a huge variety of works created at Fab Lab in March. And so we're really excited about our exhibition schedule this spring and summer. Uh, but now going on, oh, I'm so sorry. Can you go back? I got sidetracked, thank you. <laughs> so another thing that we do here at the Center for Creativity is we love to bring in visiting artists who can work with our students and with the community and is maybe somebody special that they normally wouldn't have the chance to meet or work with. Uh, over the past few years, we've had the um, creative director of Sesame Street, Kip Rathka. We've had the creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Kevin Stark. We've had the um, founder of the Tenement Museum in Manhattan, which if you have a trip to New York on the horizon, go, it's amazing. Um, we've had uh, a Pulitzer Prize in photographer, so we're always trying to bring in new people um, and always offering the community a, a chance to engage with these artists as well. And you can um, be kept up to date about our visiting artists uh, by putting your um, email on our email list in the middle of each table or there's also an email address on that list. You can just email directly to Cindy and ask to be put on the list. Uh, we don't share that list with other organizations. We only send out a newsletter about every two months, so it's certainly not gonna clog up your inbox, but then you'll always know uh, what free events we have coming up and the ones that do require registration tend to fill out very very quickly so you usually want to be on the email list to um, to do that most of them don't require uh, registration but sometimes we do have to do that slide please oh, sorry that's okay uh, a couple years ago, uh, we applied for a license from the TED organization. I'm guessing most of you have probably heard of TED Talks, uh, and we received that license. So we were able to put on a TED event here at the Center for Creativity. I think we had nine speakers from all across our community speaking about an incredible diversity of topics. Uh, we partnered with Thai Pros to have a live watch party at the Fly Loft that we live streamed over there because we couldn't fit everyone in here. It was just an amazing showcase of Tulsa. Um, and we are 
starting to plan for another one in the spring of 2020. Uh, and we will have an open call for speakers. So if you have, think you have a TED Talk in you, we want to hear what your idea is. Um, again, put your name on the email list, and, and we'll be putting out a call uh, through that. Uh, it could be a little bit. It's a very, it seems like a kind of simple thing, right? Just get some speakers, turn the lights on, and you're good. But it, it takes two full years to really plan it to mentor the speakers. A TED, TED Talk is, is more like theater than anything else, and it's, it's, a, it's an extensive process. I always like to say that the TED event we had two years ago, it was the most fulfilling creative project I ever did, but also took at least five years off my life. <laughs> but that said, really looking forward to the next one, which we're shooting for for 2020. Um, Slide, please. So that is kind of an overview of what we do here at the Center for Creativity, sort of with a mashup of green gift possibilities. Um, I Again, thank you so much to the iCamp partners for being a part of that series, but also for being here today. Uh, we love working with those 20 organizations. And um, uh, working with nonprofits like Sustainable Tulsa on events that are free and open to the public. So uh, thank you. And I think now we're opening it to questions. Uh, we'll right? let uh, each of the booths uh, mm -hmm. say a few words, and then we'll open uh, for questions. But if you just walked in, uh, feel like you can go on over there and, and get something to eat. It's completely OK. Or if you're going for a second round, just wanted to kind of make sure people felt comfortable with that. So we'll start right here. Hello, thank you for having Philbrook here. Um, we're really excited to talk about what we have to offer. Um, we um, have amazing gift opportunities in our shop at Philbrook. Um, this year there's a Tempietto snow globe, the Philbrook annual festival pin, um, exclusive chocolate by Glacier, as well as a coffee by Double Shot. So lots of awesome gifts in there. We're offering for our sustainable gift giving, um, we have our Philbrook gift membership um, um, today that comes with the chocolate that's for sale in the shop by um, Glacier. So that's an awesome option, as well as festival tickets. And if you're giving that as a gift, the December 28th date for uh, festival night is a good option there. So thank you. OK, I'm Graham Brandon with The Met. And uh, this is our 23rd green gift list. So talk about uh, uh, something to try to come up with innovative ideas. That's why we have young people like uh, this guy right here. But anyway, um, one idea is the This Machine Tulsa, the bike share program. Uh, get a uh, subscription for somebody, and better yet, get one yourself, and then ride together. That would be an awesome idea. So we have, the, we have 10 on this list. And another one is this uh, toy here that I really like. It's a recycle truck. You don't have to get the recycle truck. I also got the fire truck. But uh, that's for my 30-year-old daughter, who's a firefighter. But anyway, this is 100% recycled material. Um, obviously, a, a good hot mug is great to have. People have their water bottles, but they forget their hot drinks. And I don't mix the two. So I have one of each, and I've used this for about eight years. So that's an idea. Um, I love the growler. Some your, Any beer drinking friends? The growler is great because, uh, and you know, you might get it filled. Uh, that would be nice too. They would like that. But um, but then you can also hang out with them and have a good time uh, and refill that sucker now and then. So uh, it's the gift that keeps giving and maybe back to you. So that's really nice. Do it yourself stuff. We've got a big list. You can get on our website or Facebook and and uh, have fun. Hi. I'm Leanne Ziegler from Waterworks Art Center, and we're part of the City of Tulsa's Parks and Recreation Department, and we're just about five minutes west of here. We're just west of downtown on 3rd Street, which turns into Charles Page Boulevard, for those of you who don't know where we are, and we're in a beautiful historic building built in 1911 and uh, in New Block Park. So some ideas that we had today, of course, they seem to be on the uptick, which I'm happy about, are the gifts of experience. So we have classes, and we have workshops, and we have all kinds of special events that we host at Waterworks. And uh, a, a lovely gift is to enroll yourself and your loved one. We have a lot of couples who like to do this and throw pottery you know, on the wheel or do whatever. Uh, sign up for either a class series or even just a one-day workshop. So come check it out. You can also get a gift certificate from us. Thanks. <laughs> 
Sorry, I'm going to come around. So hi. <laughs> I'm Ann Money. I'm with the Oklahoma Aquarium. And I want to thank Corey and Anina for having us here today. So what we are offering today are some discounts on that experiential learning experience and, and, and gift experience. So we have discounts on memberships. We have gift certificates for a package that includes admission and a behind the scenes tour. And if you've ever seen a child above our shark exhibit, it is something that will affect them for the rest of their lives. So, and they get to touch a shark too, but not the bull sharks, that would be bad. So come by and see us and we'll talk about everything we've got for you. Thank you. Hi, I'll come out from <laughs> behind here too. I'm Anitra Lavenhar with Anitra's Eye Photography. I'm a local photographer and I have a number of things that I offer. I have um, prints, cards, calendars for sale uh, today, and also you could get a card and look on my website. Uh, wonderful art is always a great gift. I have a lot of local Tulsa photographs, but the other thing that I mainly came here today to tell you about was my iPhone photography workshops. Everybody has their phone with them. It doesn't even have to be an iPhone. It could be any mobile phone. But uh, being able to learn how to really use that well and get really creative with it, there's so much you can do. When I teach my classes, usually in the first 15 minutes, people are like, oh my god, I have no idea I could do that. So they're really fun classes. I have gift certificates for the classes, or you could also do um, private lessons as well. In addition to all of that, I do family portraits, and I'm offering a discount for those um, during the holiday season. So come by and see me. Hi, I'm Evan Newford, the Admissions and Membership Manager at the Tulsa Zoo. Uh, like they mentioned earlier, we do have a holiday special going on. All of our, family, or all of our memberships right now uh, for $10 off and then getting an extra month, so 13 months for that person that you're giving that gift to, um, that they can come out and enjoy the zoo whenever they want. Um, like they mentioned Lost Kingdom earlier, we also have some brand new animals that have joined uh, our collection this year, from our baby giraffe Ohi uh, to a brand new one and a half year old uh, white rhinoceros named Rudo. Um, it's a gift that they can use constantly. Um, it's also something that if you think of a membership for a family for a zoo, they have to have kids. Uh, we've started a brand new membership program this year that's geared more towards adults, uh, those that may be couples that don't have kids yet or adult friends that want to go out. Uh, we want to make sure that the zoo is a place that everyone uh, can feel like they can go and have a good time. You don't just have to have little ones tagging along with you. Uh, so if you have any more questions about that or what other discounts you can receive with your membership, uh, come by and see us. Hi, I'm Adrienne Lolly Hills from AHA Tulsa. And as mentioned earlier, if you haven't paid a visit to the Hardesty Center in the Tulsa Arts District in a while, please come by. In addition to having a new name, formerly the Arts and Humanities Council of Tulsa, quite a mouthful, um, we have really reimagined the way that our building works and all of our programming. So today we are offering memberships for families that start at $75 a year for a family of four, and that includes free admission every um, day that we're open, as well as 10% off select classes. This spring we're going to be offering classes on everything from podcasting to Adobe Illustrator to watercolor painting, to metalsmithing. So we're really focused on um, cultivating the creative possibility of Tulsa through education, advocacy, and community partnerships. So please come visit us. I don't, I don't need the mic. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to TCC for hosting these first Thursdays and other events for Sustainable Tulsa. This facility has the best in class. This facility is just phenomenal. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. I am. Thank, thank you. We love having Sustainable Tulsa here. And, and I'm putting that thank you right back on the community because as a community college, we are supported by our community in part through our ad valorem taxes. And so we want to make sure we are serving that community on multiple levels, whether that's uh, through providing direct education to students or through providing space uh, for events like this. So thank you as a community for supporting TCC. Yeah. 
One oak. Absolutely, one oak and Lafa for that lunch. Well, uh, it was Lafa that prepared it, but it was actually one oak. Uh, looks like we have some of the one oak team here. Uh, we have uh, Jeff Renberg, Nadia, and Cindy. Uh, They're the giveaway. They were the reason we're having this wonderful food. So thank you from one oak. Any other questions about uh, some of the programming that's going on around the community? Okay. Where, where can I get the recycle truck? Okay. Um, this is called Green Toys. That's actually the name of the company. So you can, you can get it at Target and Walmart, but also you can, of course, have it shipped if you want. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Anything else? Anything else? Um, so, you know, I, there were so many programs, and actually it kind of inspired me that maybe like during a lunch hour for Samuel Tulsa staff, maybe we'll come to one of those programs because they're during the day. And, you know, that could be, you know, for your thinking about it just beyond yourself or your family, but even within your business community, it could be a great, you know, thing to go and do because it's during the, the work day as a, as a way to kind of find a way to do that. Uh, so, so much great programming, and I'm really excited to see the exhibit in January. So let's give Anina a round of applause. Thank you so much. Um, and I, we, uh, there were so many generous people. We do have a few. Uh, Sandy, come with me. Uh, we have a few gifts to give away, right? Okay. And uh, Sandy, I'm gonna let you do it. Okay, we're gonna need. Do you, okay. After I'll do this, do you wanna get the bat box and yeah, yeah. the pottery? Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much for coming. We have um, a lot of wonderful gifts that some of our um, booth participants have provided. So. Um, I'm gonna have Anina pick. Anina pick. The first is gonna be a pair of uh, passes to uh, Philbrook. Everybody loves Philbrook. Lori Medic. Is Lori here? Woo! And it's good for, of course, Philbrook or the downtown location. Where? Do oh, oh, oh! Come on up. <clears throat> um. And then as uh, we just heard from the Reimagine AHA, there is the, the, the brand new experience, which is amazing. I actually went, took my son there, and a week later, his school had a field trip there, so I volunteered to go back. So it is pretty amazing. So um, two passes to the AHA. Cindy Spittler. And we have another pair of passes to, to Philbrook. Jean Lemon. Does the zoo want to talk about this? Rick, do you want to talk about what we're going to give away next? Thank, thank you. Here's a little. This is a very popular item at our last first Thursday, so Rick was kind enough to bring another one. It, it's a, a bat box, a nest box for brown bats, uh, short-tailed Mexican free-tailed bats. Um, it's already built, and there's an instruction packet that comes with it on how to either hang it on your house, and depending on what kind of house you have, how to hang it properly. And there's also instructions to, if you want to put it on a pole, and, uh, and install it that way on a pole. Um, you don't want to put it in a tree, so. A lot of people here want this one. Yeah, this is a big one, huh? <laughs> Bruce Nemi. <laughs> All right. And um, why don't you why don't you hold on to this one? And we have this beautiful piece of pottery here that Sarah is is showing. And this is a beautiful piece of pottery donated by Waterworks. Um, it was created by uh, their resident artist, uh, Yusuf Etadai. How'd I do? Yusuf Etadai. Um, and it's very gorgeous. Thank you so much for the donation. Okay, one more. Ken Graham. 
All right. I think that's it. So yes, there's cookies if you haven't had one again. Uh, B'nai Amuna, uh, Altamon Bakery. And if you want to know more about it, Betty Lehman's right here if you have questions from B'nai Amuna. But thank you. Have a great holiday. Be safe. Enjoy time with family and friends. And we'll see you back here on January, and January 1st Thursday. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.